welcome to the Autumn Acorn Knits. My name is Judy and this is episode 67 where I come to you monthly to talk about all of the things that I've been knitting, crocheting, designing, and dyeing. Welcome back if you're a returning viewer and if it's your first time, I really hope you like it and welcome. It's really nice to have you here. Let's get started. I have some finished objects today. I have a few works in progress. Um, I have some acquisitions. I have some future knitting plans. And I have an announcement. So yeah, we'll start with finished objects. It's very warm here in New Hampshire. Um, very humid. So I do have the fan going. And Joe is outside <laughs> mowing the lawn because as you know, I have a hard time recording when he's in the house, so while he's out. Um, I tried setting it all up in the cabin, and I did. I had it all ready to go. Everything was out there, and it was just too hot. <laughs> so I had to pack it all back up, bring it back in the house. So please bear with me. If there is any external sound, I will try to edit it out. But anyway, let's get started with finished objects. Now my first finished object, it's kind of disappointing because I don't even have it with me. Um, I just recently finished a pajama cardigan 2.0, which is a design of mine uh, that I created a couple of years ago. The, the 1.0 version, or the first version, was a bottom-up design and it was seamed. And I wear that thing constantly. However, it in today's like more modern knitters they're asking for top-down seamless designs and so I thought I would take one of my more popular designs and revise it into a top-down which has been finished and I have finished mine uh, it took me 54 days <laughs> um, to finish that so almost two months I did not work on it exclusively, and because of the yarn that I used, which is uh, Mungo by Retrosario or Rosa Pomar, uh, the Mungo is a recycled cotton with wool, and it's hard on the hands. Makes a beautiful, beautiful finished fabric, perfect for a pajama cardigan because it, the cotton in it and the recycled fibers make it feel very pajama-ish and it gets better with washing and wear. However, knitting with it is a beast. So I was really happy when I finished it and I ended up gifting it um, to my daughter Sarah. Sarah, if you're watching, you better turn this off. <laughs> but um, I don't think she is. But anyway, it was knit and I'll put photos here for you. It off in the mail to Hawaii so that it can make it to my daughter's birthday by the 21st of this month. I used light, it's a light gray, I think the color's ash, and the number is 002. Um, yeah, so I'm excited that she will soon have a pajama cardigan. My daughter Kelly already has one, I have my own, and now this is the um, third one I've knit out of that same Mungo yarn. It took me six skeins. It is a worsted weight. And is that all I have to say about that? I, I knit the size medium. Um, the pajama cardigan is in full test knit right now. We have lots of versions being knit up. And I'm excited for it. That will be released in September. So if you're looking for the pajama cardigan 2.0 September, I will have it uh, available. Let's see, the next pattern I want to talk about um, are a pair of socks. I saw this pattern on Instagram and it was about a week before the pattern was due to be released and I knew immediately that I wanted to, um, to knit this pair of socks. So I marked down, you know, when it would be um, available, and I think it was on July 1st, maybe? 
and I, um, you know, I put it, I marked it, and I was, I was ready to go, um, the day of, and it, it wasn't ready yet, so I reached out to the pattern writer, and she said, oh, soon, it'll be out soon, and then by the time I went back to check again, she had already gifted me the pattern. I mean, really? So, so this pattern is called the Swiss Dot Shorties. Uh, by Nancy Wheeler, and Nancy has a podcast. I'm going to show you a picture of these adorable socks. And if you can't see this well, I will. I'll put in an, another photo that you can, um, so you can see it better. But anyway, these are top-down socks by Nancy Wheeler, and Nancy <clears throat> has a podcast called Knit Sip Happy, which you should check out. And so she um, released this pattern and I knit it up. So here's uh, my version and they don't, you'll probably notice, they don't look exactly like the photo um, because I modified them to fit my needs. Um, so my Swiss dots, which are really hard to see in this yarn, which was an error that I, I would say that I made in choosing the color, but um, the Swiss dots don't show up very well, and mine are in straight lines, and they are supposed to be staggered. But I didn't realize my mistake until it was too late, and I wasn't going to go back up and, and take them out because they're socks. I used Patton's Cory Sock for the main fabric, Patton's Cory Sock, and it is a 75% washable wool, 25% nylon. I've used Patton's Cory before. It is a beast. It um, it really wears super well, so I'm happy about that. And then I used a mini skein for my contrast color, and I still have plenty left, actually. But it was a really pretty um, hand-dyed yarn that I had received as a gift. These socks fit me better than probably any socks I've knit so far. They fit fantastic. I'll put a photo in so you could see them on my feet, at least one of them on my feet. Super happy. I loved knitting these. I couldn't wait to get to the next stripe that kept me going, although it did take me uh, 10 days four days for the first sock and then I took a little break and then six days for the second sock but again I was working on a lot of different projects so yeah the Swiss dot shorties that pattern is available and I highly recommend it I used US 1 uh, double points nothing fancy this is handy my little scissors never I never lose my scissors this way so now I can wear these I might hang them up first just to you know a little sock decoration for a while but I'm excited to wear them alrighty moving along to a collaboration uh, that I have been um, that I have a collaboration that I have <laughs> speak words with wool dreamers and their manchalopi line of yarn which is their unspun wool um, I'll put a video up of me unboxing this beautiful yarn when I received it Pardo, which is their unspun brown wool. This is about half of a, 
Uh, they call them wheels. So this is about half a wheel. And I received two of these initially. The other color I received was Rosa, which is this really pretty pinkish lavender color. And I received one. And the last color I received was called Verde or Verde. Uh, that is Spanish for green, and it's this gorgeous, gorgeous green. I'm in love with this green, and this is the one wheel that I received. Um, what I... Well, there's a story. There's a story. So, I started while I was waiting for my Monchalope. I needed to, or I wanted to practice my plan, my pattern plan. I had a I had a um, design in mind that I wanted to make. And I had some new Tedin in my stash. I have plenty of that in my stash, but I thought this color would be really nice uh, for the sample of what I wanted to make. And this color is called Lucra, Lucra, L-U-C-K-R-A, which means to open the earth and let the sun in. Uh, deep it's a deep green and brown so this is a tonal you know it's got um, it's multi-dimensional um, it's just it's not as flat a color as the um, the Manchalope brown so I used this held double the unspun held double and I started with this um, swatch so I knew that this design was going to be felted, so I just played around with it a little bit and thought, you know, and I threw it in the machine, in the washing machine, when I was done. And it came out lovely, like I really, really like how thick and squishy this is and how well it felted on the first cycle of the machine. So I went ahead and I sketched out the design and um, knit my first sample. So what this is, is this is a mat, I'm calling it a forest mat, that you would bring when you go out into the forest to have a sit, to maybe you want to sketch in your nature journal, maybe you just want to sit and watch, you know, the animals go by, maybe you want to bring it with you to the park, park bench, uh, to a sporting event, um, a concert in the park, I don't know, anywhere you could think of that you might want to have a comfortable seat. But it's specifically intended to be a forest mat for forest, forestry, <laughs> for foresting, how's that? And here's my first sample in the New Tedon. And as you can see, it has some color work on both sides, or both ends rather, of the mat. Um, this is knit in the round, so this is a double, double um, layer, which makes it super cozy and comfy, and it is knit in the round so that there's no knitting flat, because, you know, color work and, and flat. And there's not too much color work. This is stranded color work. Um, I think just enough, just enough to you know, give it a little bit of flair, a little design, so, and look how nicely this folds up, and then you can just bring it with you. So, I love how thick it is, I love how comfortable it is, and I just love every, I don't know, I really am, am so, so excited about, about this particular pattern. I think this makes for a super great gift for someone who has everything, you know? So that was the first sample, so that I could see how this was going to work up. And, ooh, there's a bug. I really thought, um, you know, unspun is unspun, right? I thought they might behave very similarly. However, when I did the swatch, and this swatch is a lot smaller, it actually has a little hole in the middle, but um, when I did this swatch, I noticed that it felted differently. It didn't uh, lose as much of its, um, of its measurements, basically. So it shrunk less than the Nutidin did. So I had to keep that in mind when I was designing this. 
and I will show you my second sample. And this is the one made from Moncholopi. So you'll notice with this, obviously the color is, uh, it's a darker brown and the pink and the green color work is a lot more pronounced and that was just because the colors were brighter and they just showed up better on this dark brown background. The um, construction is the same. Uh, it ended up being, as you could see, a bit smaller, but not. Uh, so it's funny because the width really, we didn't lose much width at all. Um, I mean, it's not much smaller, but it is a little bit uh, narrower, so, but pretty close. Not as thick, so when I fold this one, it's still really comfortable and, and does the job exactly as I want, but it's not as thick. And I did hold two strands. It comes with two strands together. You can choose to purchase your wheels one-stranded, but I, I knew I'd want to work with it with two, so it's easier to do that. But yeah, this is my forest mat second version, and yeah, I will be releasing this pattern in the near future. I don't know exactly when yet, but uh, stay tuned for that fun little pattern. Oh, and I should say thank you so much to Manchalopi, to Wool Dreamers, to the lovely people that work there for sending me this yarn for free in return for me sharing it with you. And I will continue to share because I do plan to make another forest mat, um, but I'm going to choose to make one of these um, colors the main color instead of the brown. So it's different. Probably, I'm probably going to do the green one, but I can't say for sure because I really love the pink too. Yeah, that is finished object number three. Actually, number four because there were two mats. So, finished object number four. The first forest mat, the one made with New Tedon, took me about 10 days. The second one took a little longer, 14 days because, again, just didn't work on it exclusively. I had about three things going on at once at that time. Um, my final finished object is a bandana. Um, it's the tulip bandana, which I've shown you a couple of iterations of it already. But I want to show you the one I made yesterday. And this is a crochet pattern and this is a free pattern. It's coming out soon, so this month. And here it is. Here's the one I made yesterday. So this is obviously a hair. The end is a hair bandana. Um, for this one I knit some I-cord straps instead of crochet. Um, in this version, you'll notice these are the crocheted ones and I just decided I wanted to do some knit this time. Um, very easy, very straightforward. It, with, it has the two uh, tulip rows in it which make it pretty cute. Um, I'm not going to put it on but I think you know the you get the idea of how it would look if it was on. This one was made out of fingering weight yarn and you can do this in fingering. This is like heavy fingering to DK. You can do it in fingering, sport, DK, up to DK, I'd say. If you did it with worsted, it just it might be a little too big, but you could try. So anyway, yeah, real simple, real fun. Here's the yarn. This was some nice fingering weight yarn that I had dyed when I first started dyeing. I used cochineal, and oh, I love this one because of all the variegation in it. I also used for the tulips this pale pale pink which believe it or not was also dyed with cochineal. Just not very much. And then this was a yarn that I bought from an advent calendar from Orlando Fiber Co. Very nice green variegated that I used for the leaves because there's a leaf row. Um, this is crocheted from the bottom point up and yeah, 
you can look for that free pattern soon. If you're on my mailing list, you'll get it that directly. You'll know right away when it when it goes out. Okay, that is everything I wanted to talk about uh, for finished objects. Let's get into works in progress. I've been having a ball with works in progress. So much fun. The first thing I want to show you is Anchor's Cardigan or Anker's Cardigan, I'm not sure how you say it, by Petite Knit. I've been working on this since July 1st, I cast it on. So just so for reference, today's July 15th, so two weeks I've been working on this. And here it is. It's not finished. I obviously still have sleeves to go and I just finished the back ribbing this morning. As you can see, it's a split hem. And I used one strand of mohair and one strand of Aran Weight Knit Pick Swoosh in undyed natural tweed. And the mohair was also undyed and in a natural cream color. This pattern is supposed to be knit with a fingering weight yarn, I think it is, not a or sport, maybe sport weight, but I decided to make it chunky because I had this yarn on hand that I had started a blanket with a while ago and I just tore it out because it wasn't, I wasn't going to have enough yarn and ended up making this modified version of Anker's cardigan. Um, Obviously it has eight buttons, and what else can I say? Oh, I knit the smallest size. Um, I used US 9 needles. So I just figured since the yarn is a lot chunkier and the needles are bigger, I would, use, I would just knit the smallest size, the extra small. And it fits me really, really well. It's obviously oversized as I want it to be for a heavy cardigan. Um, there's no short rows in the directions, and by the time I realized it, it was just it was just too late. So I, that's what I, why I went with the split hem and the longer back ribbing than the front. So that seems to remedy any problems. And I don't plan to wear it buttons. I normally don't button anything. Um, because it's just usually too warm and I need to be able to get it off quickly. So I will show you how it fits though, even though it's very warm out. Okay. There you go. Plenty of positive ease. You know, so there's no um, gapping. And let's see if you can see the back. I'm so happy with how this turned out. I really am. I love it. I think I think I'll get a lot of wear out of this one in the winter. And it feels incredible. So yeah, this is my Anchors cardigan, modified to, to work with the yarn that I had. Um, let's see, what else can I tell you? Here is the yarn that I used. 85% Superwash Merino, 15% Donegal Nep, Aran Weight, 188 yards per 100 grams, and here is the mohair, I have one left, if 
By the way, I hope I don't run out of yarn because I am getting low um, on the um, on this. I have a couple of skeins though of the worsted weight that I may be able to just throw in the sleeves and not be able to tell. Uh, let's see, we got one, two, three, four, five, one, uh, one, two, three, four, five. So five skeins I've already used. I still have this much of skein six and this. So, so we'll see how I do on that. Um, hopefully I can not go on sleeve island and just kind of get through the sleeves. I hope they're not too roomy. I'm a little concerned that they are, but hey, better than being too tight, right? So, yes, I love this so, so much. So, so much. Oh, and I have the beautiful vintage dreamers hand carved toadstool there that I adore. So anyway, this has been such a joy to work on. Um, uh, this has been my nighttime TV knitting. So um, while we watch alone, I like to knit on this one because it's just easy. And I'm keeping it in my little handle basket. Okay, now the next one I'm keeping in this little bucket bag that I made recently. This is a Melody Hoffman pattern, otherwise known as Mandarins. And as a patron, you receive free patterns, so I received this pattern as a paid patron for free. And it's called Komori. This isn't one of her older designs. Komori is Japanese and it means to guard, to protect, to defend. This is a beautiful cardigan and it is the reason that I wanted to knit it was because it's constructed in a very different way than anything that I've knit before. In fact, I have two projects today that are like that. Um, so for this one, you start with that side panel. I should show you that a little better. So this part, this where the um, lace is, that is going side to side. So you start with that bottom side panel and then you build off of that. So that's where I am right now. Hopefully you could see that pretty lace. I am using a yarn by Hobby. This is their Tweed Delight. Sorry. Here's the label. Hobby Tweed Delight, and there is the pink. Another tweed in this beautiful color. Um, I'm not sure what the color is, but it says color 14, if that means anything to you. But it's a beautiful rust color. So I, what I do is each, I won't show you because, you know, obviously it's a paid for pattern, but see all the red? Oh, the pink, I mean. I cross off the row as I'm working on it, and then um, I move my sticky. So I, it's a lot of rows. I'm on chart two, but I'm following the written directions because that's what I prefer. But every single row is different, and so it, and it's three charts. So, but I'm really enjoying it. It's a lot of fun. It's not very hard. You just have to pay attention cross it off as you go along. So this is like a long-term project. I'm not working on it quickly. I'm not in a rush. It's definitely going to be a fall sweater. But I'm really enjoying the fact that it's so different than anything else that I've knit. So that's the Komori cardigan. My last work in progress is a t-shirt. And it is called the Casera 
tea. Casera is Spanish and it means homemade. The Casera tea is a pattern by Knit Picks. I received, I got to choose a free pattern by signing up for their email list. So um, I chose this one. Okay, so for the Casera tea, I am using Sadness Garn Lena. Um, you, I am using a US 5 and a US 7 needle and this is also a very different construction than anything I've done. This is a saddle shoulder construction. I'll show you a picture of the tee. It is. And then I'll show you a picture of the shoulder, saddle shoulder. It's a really pretty lace. So for this t-shirt, you start with the saddles. So you have two lace pieces that you're working side to side. You know, back and forth flat. Here's one, and here's the other one, and then you pick up stitches. Here, I need to hold this up in a certain way to show you properly. Here we go. So you could see that's the front and this is the back. And there are short rows, which obviously raises the back. There's also short rows in the front. And like I said, picking up, picking up stitches once you finished your saddles. And then after the short rows, it's just stuck in it and stuck in it with some increases staggered in. Um, I love how this pico bind off for the saddle makes the edge of the sleeve. I really like that. And I love the way that this fabric is turning out with this yarn. It is incredible. And I haven't obviously blocked it yet to make all the stitches even. But it is a dream to knit with this yarn. This is a uh, wool and linen blend. I think there's some viscose in it too. But I, I really can't say enough good things about this yarn. I've already been on Heavenly Yarns website to see what my next color choice will be. I'm, I'm leaning toward maybe the blue. There's a really pretty putty color. There's so many pretty colors, but um, this is their pink. And yeah, looks like I'm losing my stitch marker somehow. <laughs> but anyway, um, this I keep working on and working on and I can't wait to wear it. So once I finish with the body, I'll go back in and you pick up stitches so I can tighten up that neck and neaten up that neck a little bit. But so far, I really recommend this. It gets a little fiddly, you know, when you're doing the short rows and all that, but it's it's not difficult at all. And I just think it's a really cool design. And that is the Casera Tea by Knit Picks. Okay, that is it for Works in Progress. For acquisitions, um, my sister told me about a thrift store slash antique shop in Vermont that was selling. There was a woman that was getting rid of all of her stash. She's in her 70s and she's just finished with it. She's got too much. So she's been bagging it up and bringing it to this consignment store. And, you know, her prices are really good. They're about 50% off of what you would pay retail and she just has really good taste so one of the um, days that I went the day that I went with my sister 
I found this bag of Patton's Corey socks. There were one, two, three. There were six all together. I have five left. And um, they have 166 yards each. And the six of them were only $20. So I thought that was a really good deal. And um, I always need sock yarn. Then I went back. Nope, this was still that first time. This was the first time that I went with my sister. I also picked up. This really beautiful soft willow yarn in this powder blue color. And I picked up two of these. Um, and these have about 450 yards a piece. And I am planning to uh, combine them with this mohair and make a ranunculus in August. So that's the plan. I don't know if it's going to end up being exactly with this yarn or not, but so far that's my plan. Some sort of ranunculus with these held double. Um, my friend Marie and I are going to cast on together. We are late to the party, but we really want a ranunculus, finally. So anyway, that was a good deal. I think those two skeins were only like $5 for the two um, Willow skeins, so good deal. And then I went back on my own, and I went and I saw this time she had put out four skeins of my favorite fisherman's wool. And I love this color. This is going to make a very, very nice sweater, I think. Uh, 349 yards per skein. This is 78% wool. There is some acrylic in it as well. Um, and this was $24 for all four, so I thought that was a pretty good price. Also, Knit Picks was having their summer sale, and I had a 20% off coupon on top of the 40% savings, so it was a really good deal. I will put a photo in of the box of minis that I purchased of palette Ugh. in these autumn colors. They're just gorgeous. this palette, this bag of palette, <clears throat> while they were having such a steep discount and I just, oh I love this color. Look at it. It's a gorgeous dusty purple. Fingering weight, um, yeah, 239 yards. And I don't know, I might be combining this with the minis and make a all over color work sweater. Or something 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 special it has to be special but I'm not sure what yet I also consider turning this into a ranunculus as well or well I'm sure I'd get more than one but for the winter so we'll see I'm not sure all right now moving on to future plans I have besides the ranunculus I have one other future knitting plan and that is to knit the love note again by tin can knits i've already knit this once um, as part of a knit along but this time i will not this is my plan anyway i'm not sure if it's going to stay but i will not do the lace i will just simply knit the sweater without the lace but i am using this silky wool that i purchased at mother of pearl in freeport maine while I was on vacation this summer. So, yeah, that's the plan. We'll see how that works out, though. Um, obviously, I'll be doing some modifying because it is intended to be knit with a DK weight, and this is a fingering weight. But I think I can do it. Getting more comfortable with making modifications. I have the needles in here and everything ready to go, so. There they are. But I do not want to cast anything else on until I finish the, um, the, the three things that I have, the three cardigans that I have going. Oh, I forgot to show you this 
this last yarn that I got from Knit Picks. This is Lindy Chain in this really pretty color, green, bluish green. And this is a fingering weight yarn. And I think this is a cotton. I'll put um, I'll put what the contents are on the screen, but I got four of these, so these will obviously be um, a tank top or some sort of a tee for the summer. So yeah, that was it for acquisitions. Um, in news, if you are following me on Instagram, you already know this. If you are on the news letter, or email, sign up list, you already know this. But Marie of Old Time Knits and I are going to be hosting a knitting retreat. This has been a lifelong dream of mine. Not lifelong, but ever since I started podcasting, I have wanted to do a retreat. And now that my extroverted friend is in and she thought this would be a great idea, I said, yes, I'm in too. And um, so we have booked a beautiful Airbnb in New Hampshire. And we're having it in the winter, January 25th to the 28th. The location is Belmont, New Hampshire. And it, it's going to be great fun. We've kept it all really low key. We tried to keep the price really low. Um, all of your meals will be included. And it's going to be a lot of fun. So uh, we are limited in how many we can have. So we will be allowing 13 to register and you'll be accepted based on your postmark date so you need to get them in quick. Um, registration will begin on September 1st and I will make sure I have all of the information linked down below in the show notes so that you can check out what's going to be happening with the retreat. But we are super excited and we're going to have a lot of fun surprises so hope you can join us. Okay, that is everything except I wanted to just announce to you that I am looking for test knitters for the Kulipa slipover. This pattern is in tech editing now and will soon be ready for test knitting. <laughs>and crochet hybrid project. So the tulip row is crochet. The rest of it is knit, uh, oversized, made with Shetland wool, uh, worsted weight, and I need testers for sizes extra small to 5X. If you can help out, we'll be starting in a week or two. So just reach out to me through email or you can leave a message here on the podcast uh, or through Instagram. So that is it. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. I hope you're doing well. And I will see you on the next one. Bye.